It's an exciting time to be in nursing, and it's a very exciting time to be in nursing education. Here at the College of Nursing, the University of Missouri-St. Louis, we are implementing the human patient simulators in our nursing curriculum for our undergraduate students as well as our master's prepared students. We use the simulator for different level nursing students. Early on, our fundamental students perform head-to-toe assessments in non-interventional scenarios. Here are a few examples of our early students performing head-to-toe assessments. The simulator is able to provide the students with dialogue as they speak to the simulator. The simulator can respond with appropriate comments. The simulator is controlled by a faculty member sitting behind a two-way mirror connected to a laptop computer. Through the laptop we can manipulate the things that the simulator is able to accomplish. Right now the student is listening to heart sounds, lung sounds, as well as active belly sounds. Depending on the situation or scenario, these sounds can be manipulated and changed as needed. In addition, extra equipment and supplies such as sequentials, TED hose, drains, uh, are applied to the mannequin to make the situation more realistic. The student is given approximately 15 minutes to complete a head-to-toe assessment. Fundamental students find this to be a very valuable experience. Following the simulation, there is a debrief where the faculty member reviews their performance, goes over some of the highlights, what their strengths are, what their areas for improvement could be, with the hopes that when the student gets to the clinical environment with actual patients, they take the learning along with them. The simulator is equipped with an arm that is active for IV fluids as well as phlebotomy and blood draw, IV push medications. The simulator can also be equipped with different wounds in the belly area, chest tube sites, extremities. Based on what the situation calls for, the dressings can be manipulated uh, with uh, through drainage, no drainage. It requires a student to perform accurate assessments. Right now the student's looking at an IV site for uh, infiltration. The room is equipped with a two-way mirror. This enables the, the faculty member on the other side of the mirror to observe the student. When the faculty is out of sight, it requires the student to do the thinking on their own, and they're not looking to the faculty for helpful cues. Maybe this will make it easier for you. You won't be coughing so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if your pulse coughs. Just look this on your finger real quick. As students progress in the program, they come into the simulation lab for increasingly difficult scenarios. These scenarios are about a 20 minute time block where the student comes in and interacts with the simulator. Based on the level of difficulty, the scenario requires the student to intervene and make clinical decisions. Based on their decisions or lack thereof, the patient may either improve or deteriorate. The good thing about simulation is you can allow a patient to deteriorate and no one gets hurt. In a real situation with a real patient, the clinical instructor is required to intervene and the student may not learn from that interaction. The faculty member is on the other side of the, the window watching the student and manipulating the actions of the simulator. Need some help in here. Watch now as our critical care nursing students participate in a resuscitation. Get the cart. Any doctor in here? What are we going to going on here? Mr. Roberts, here you go. 
Imperial Mail. He came in for a left BKA. He was awake overnight. Brown and he came in and he became unresponsive. He had a full time. Uh, okay. Did he have a blood pressure for grass? Okay, let's get an O2 sample and see if we can get a blood pressure. Okay. Does he have any spontaneous respirations? No. All right. Do we have him on the monitor? Working on it. Right. He's got a rhythm, but I don't see a pulse. Let's get CPR. Can we have some epinephrine, please? Yes. Yeah. What kind of empty fluids do we have running? We have normal saline going at 50. All right. Let's open that saline up wide open. Are we going to need to Are we in, are we perfusing? Are getting any air in? Okay, so that's 71. Do we have bread sounds? Uh, pull back a little. Okay. Listen while I'm doing it. Get a BP. No BP. No BP. No respirations, no pulse. Let's keep CPR going. Can we have some epinephrine? <coughs> yes. Someone got the fluids running? She's working on it right now. Make sure that trito is off. No pulse. What's his O2 sat? No O2. Let me check them. Are we getting it's the air? Pump. Are we getting the air? At the end, one milligram. Check the BP again. Do we have those fluids running? Not yet. Just open it wide. Just open it wide. Huh. Just hook it up okay. and get it get it rolling. Yeah. Somebody check a pulse now that that empty's on board. No pulse. No pulse. With CPR, no pulse. Okay. Do we need to switch off CPR? Is she running out of steam? No BP. Okay, what's our rhythm show? 65. Let's shock him. Let's shock him. Um, I got it. Okay, it's on. What are we shocking at? 30. Let's get a paddle look first. Okay. Gel, gel. Okay. Charge, charge to 20. Looks like we have sinus rhythm maybe. Heart rate 80. Upside down. Are we perfusing it? O2 65. What's her pulse? What's her blood pressure? Check that again. The fluids, we've given an epi, we've shocked her at 200. And we have a pulse. All right, let's get her to the ICU. What's her fluid still running in? Wide open. Open. Try blood pressure again. O2 sats aren't very good. Bag her a little faster. Get near? Yeah, good. See that chest rising. O2 sats coming up in the 80s. Keep bagging her. I feel better now.